Welcome. In this video, I'm going to go over the procedure to install Windows and then Ubuntu 20.04 on an Intel NUC. So this machine does currently dual boot, but I have two SSDs in it and I want to switch it down to one. So it'll just run both systems off one SSD because I need the other SSD for something. So I'll put a link in the description to my playlist for the Intel NUC and for Windows 10. And I'm not going to cover absolutely everything here but I'm going to go through the procedure of getting the systems installed. I have other videos on installing the drivers for the Intel NUC and things like that, and then some tweaks you want to do after you uh, do dual boot for the clock and to do a default uh, boot system. So you can find those in my playlist below. I'll also put a link to some of the hardware I'm using on Amazon. If you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. So I have my web browser up here on three different sites you'll need to visit first, and the first is Rufus, and this creates bootable USB drives. The next is Windows ISO download. So you want to go to Microsoft and download the tool to download the ISO files. And then you want to go to Ubuntu and download Ubuntu 20.04 LTS. And another thing to mention before you get started is this is destructive. So this uh, will wipe everything out on your drive. And sometimes uh, it's hard to do and you don't get it right and it kind of screwed things up. I don't think it will brick your system, but you may have to like tweak settings to get it working again. So if this is your only computer, this is probably a bad idea. This would be on a second computer you want to set up, and you want to make sure you have everything backed up, everything off of it. I'm using two USB thumb drives. I have a Samsung bar and a SanDisk Extreme Pro. You could, in theory, install Windows and then uh, create the installer for Ubuntu after that, but I'm just going to do both installers at the same time. So I'll close this. I'll go to my Downloads folder, and I have Rufus here. I'll double-click on it. I'll say Yes. So under devices here, we have SanDisk 32 gigabyte, and then we have the Samsung Bar 128 gigabyte. I tend to prefer the smaller drives uh, over the larger ones because sometimes the larger ones may not work. I don't know, it's hard to say. But I tested this and it's working, so I'm gonna use it. So I'll do this one for the Windows image. I'll go to Boot Selection. I'll click Select over to the right here. So I'm in my Downloads folder, and I'll choose the Win ISO. I'll hit OK. I'll hit Open. For image option, it is standard Windows installation. Partition scheme is GPT, the other would be MBR, and then target system is UEFI. I'll click on this advanced options, you can look and see what I have there. Then we have format options, we have volume label, file system is NTFS, cluster size is 4096. I'll show you advanced options here, you can see what I have labeled, the first two are checked. And then we want to go to start. It says it will destroy all the data, I'll say okay. And now this is creating the bootable flash drive. Okay, so it says you just created a media that uses the UEFI NTFS bootloader. Please remember that to boot this media, you must disable secure boot. Okay, so I'll hit close. So I'll close out of here, then I'll reopen it. This way I get the defaults. So I have devices, SanDisk. I'll select the Ubuntu ISO this time. I'll hit open. So for partition scheme here, I'll say GPT and UEFI. And we have format options. We have Ubuntu and FAT32. I'll hit start. It's asking if I want to write it in ISO mode or DD mode. So I'll choose ISO mode. I'll hit OK. It's going to destroy everything on the disk. I'll hit OK. OK, that's finished. I can hit close. I'll close this out. So now I'm going to shut it down. I'm going to take out the second hard drive. And then I'll boot it back up into the BIOS settings and we'll change some of those and then we'll boot from the Windows installer. Okay, so I turned the power on and I'm pressing F2 to go to the BIOS. Different systems are going to have different keys you're going to need to push. Okay, so that took quite a while to come up. I don't know why, but what I want to do next is hit F9 to load the defaults. It says current settings will be lost, continue loading defaults, and I'll hit yes. Next, I'll click on advanced, I'll click on boot, and we want UEFI boot enabled, and then we want legacy boot disabled. Then I'll go to secure boot, make sure that's not enabled. And then I'll go to boot configuration, and I'll say USB devices first. I may turn this off later. Then I'll click the close button, I'll say save changes, I'll hit yes. So I could hit F10 now to go to the boot menu. Okay, so now we have the Windows installer booted. You want to choose your language and currency. 
So I'm using these defaults here because this is where I live, but if you're in a different country, uh, you can change those. I'll hit next. I'll click install now. Okay, it's asking me to activate Windows and I don't have a product key. I bought it through the Microsoft store. So I'll log back in and get it activated up using that. So I'll say, don't have a product key. And I want to do Windows 10 Home, I'll hit next. I'll accept the license terms, I'll hit next. I'll do custom. So here I want to delete all these partitions. So now I have about 233 gigabytes. So I'll select this and I'll hit new. I'll type in 116,000. That's approximately half. I'll hit apply. It says to ensure all Windows features work correctly, Windows might create additional partitions for system files. I'll hit OK. So now we still have 120 gigabytes of unallocated space. I'll hit next. Now it's copying the Windows files. Okay, so now we're back at the Windows installer screen, so I'm going to turn the power off and then I'll boot holding down F10 so I can choose the SSD. Okay, so now we're at the boot screen. I'll choose the SSD. I'll hit enter. Okay, it's asking me to select my region. That's correct. I'll hit yes. It's asking about the keyboard layout. That's correct for me. I'll hit yes. Do I want to add a second layout? I'll say skip. Okay, it wants me to sign in with Microsoft. Okay, it wants me to create a pin. So I'll click create pin. And I'm going to include letters and symbols. And I'll hit OK. So this says do more across devices with activity history. And I'm going to choose no now. So it says get instant access to your Android's phone photos, text, notifications, and more. I'm going to say do it later. And now it says back up your files with OneDrive. I'll say save files to this PC. So now it's asking if I want a free trial of Microsoft 365. I'll say no thank you. It says get help from your digital assistant. I'll say decline. And this is my favorite screen. You can turn all this off if you want, which I like to turn it all off. There's a lot of privacy stuff. And I may turn something on later, but for right now, I like it all off. So that's everything. I'll hit accept. Okay, so we're booted up. It says restart required. It says your PC needs to be restarted to finish setting up this device. Hit the LPC controller. So I may need to install some drivers and things for Intel Nook, but this is the base install of Windows. And like I said, I have my playlist down below where you can uh, look up those other videos. So it looks like it just figured out the display driver. So I'm going to restart now and I'll insert the Ubuntu flash drive. Okay, so we have the Ubuntu installer up and before I could hit anything, it started booting. So it's checking the disks. Okay, so we're at the welcome screen. I can try Ubuntu or install Ubuntu. I'll install it. it has keyboard layout, I'll hit continue. I'll say normal installation, and I'm not going to download updates at this time. I want this to go a little quicker. I'll hit continue. So it says installation type. It says this computer currently has Windows Boot Manager on it. What would you like to do? And I'll say install Ubuntu alongside Windows Boot Manager. I'll hit install now. This doesn't seem to give you a lot of options as to where you're installing it, but it seems to know that the open partition is partition 5. So I'll hit continue here. It's asking me where I'm at. Is Chicago good? Continue. That's for my time zone. I'm not in Chicago. What's my name? Rick Nuck. Password. I'll hit continue. Okay, it says installation is complete. You need to restart the computer to use your new installation. So I'll hit restart now and then I'll pull out the thumb drive just as it's restarting. Okay, so here we're at the new boot screen. It says Ubuntu and Windows Boot Manager. I'll hit go on Ubuntu. And I have a video I made where I show how to make it so it defaults to the last one. So if you're in Ubuntu and restart, it'll go back to Ubuntu. 
If you're in Windows and restart, I'll go back to Windows. So we're at the login screen. And we have this connect online accounts thing. I'll skip that. I'll skip live patch. I don't want to send info. I'll hit next. I'll leave location services off. I'll hit next. And it says you're ready to go. You can use software to install apps like these, and it's loading the list. It's interesting how both systems installs were very similar. It asks about location, privacy, things like that. I'm going to click done here. I don't care about that right now. So now I have the cool Ubuntu 20.04 uh, Panther with like the laser eyes. So the one thing I shouldn't have done is had it boot from the USB drive by default. The best thing is to hit F10 and then choose the boot device. I don't know what I was thinking. Okay, so one final thing is I'll go back into the BIOS. I'll hit log out and I'll hit F2 when it reboots. I'll click on advanced. I'll click on boot. I'll click on boot configuration. I'll click off boot USB devices first. I'll click on secure boot and I'll turn that on. So I'll hit F10 to save and exit. So now I'm at the boot screen. I'll hit Ubuntu. I'm at the login screen for Ubuntu. I'll go up here to power off, power off. I'll hit restart. Okay, I'm at the boot screen again. I'll choose Windows Boot Manager. And now we have Windows booted up. There we go. So that's all for this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.